I have been doing my best to try and include as many interpretations as possible when it comes to media portrayals of historical figures and events, and then going on to rank them. When I first started out, I just went off what I could remember, so I left a lot of things out, and this is why I want to do a redux of Anne Boleyn and Catherine of Aragon in the future. When it comes to compiling a rankings list, what I usually do is search on Wikipedia or IMDb, and then compile a spreadsheet of what I can find. And once the spreadsheet's done, that's when I have to go and look for these things in general. I mostly get the films and TV series secondhand from websites like World of Books or Music Magpie or eBay, and if I'm lucky they might turn up on YouTube uploaded in full, although the quality might not be that great, or they'll be on a streaming service. However, stage productions and anything that was made before DVDs became mainstream have been the hardest to find. Seriously, I have a whole Excel workbook for the Screen Queens series. And when I was looking for the Cleopatra ones, there's this whole segment on her Wikipedia page just talking about all the silent films. And I don't know how many of those silent films are still around. It may be a while before we cover Cleopatra, but she isn't out of consideration. It's just, I have to consider how I'm going to approach the rankings when it comes to the ones that have really so many on-screen portrayals, like ridiculous amounts of on-screen portrayals. Now, as Lady Jane Grey is not as well known as many of the other Tudor monarchs, her status as a tragic figure has made her the subject of a few tragical operas. And yet, I could only find one of them that would still qualify for the rankings list. I do want to acknowledge the existence of lost media, just so you know that these things happened, even if you can't see it for yourself. The problem is, talking about them would break the pace of a typical rankings video, especially because I've got another whole segment devoted to Mark Twain. So I've decided a little bonus video acknowledging Jane's forgotten outings. And I'm probably going to have to do the same thing with Mary Queen of Scots because if you think Lady Jane Grey's got a lot of forgotten operas, just look at Mary. <laughs> This forgotten silent film, for which I have zero images to present to you, had an actress named Nina Varner play Lady Jane Grey. There's a vague summary on IMDb telling us that it's all about Jane being forced to be queen, ruling for nine days, and then being executed. Nothing special. Very simple, but remember, silent films had a very simplistic way of speaking to the audience because they had limited ways of communicating. There would be tons of just action and talking and then title card to explain the context, rinse and repeat, oy vey. I find silent films really boring if you couldn't guess. This is considered to be the first film in which Lady Jane Grey was the main character, the other two being Nova Pillbeam in Tudor Rose and Helena Bonham Carter in Lady Jane. And yes, those are on my rankings list, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about them. Nina Varna was a Russian-born British actress, and Court of Intrigue was one of many films that she starred in at the beginning of her career. She starred in several silent movies, and she only appeared in one talkie in 1937, The Show Must Go On, and then she retired. Quite a few silent film actors didn't like the evolution of the medium and they decided to retire. Well, let's just hope Nina Varna didn't then become a recluse in her mansion and believe that she was still big. It was just the pictures that got small and then she shot a guy who fell into her pool and then she just said, I'm ready for my close up. I do wonder if the execution was actually depicted in this film and how they might have gone about it because the only other silent film execution I've seen thus far, because I haven't seen the Anne Boleyn silent movie yet, is about Mary Queen of Scots, and I want to speak about this a little bit more in detail when we get to a Mary Queen of Scots rankings, hopefully before the end of the year. When they did the execution in that film, it was very, very early, so people didn't know what a jump cut was, so when the axe came down, people thought the actress actually was beheaded, so 
Would they have done the same here, or would the makers of Court of Intrigue found a clever way around it? Or would they have just cut to black? Oh well, I guess we'll never know. And yes, there are two silent film adaptations of The Prince and the Pauper, and if Jane starred in either of those I couldn't find her in the cast lists, but it doesn't really matter because I think those films are missing as well. And when it comes to future projects, if you say, oh there's a silent film you ignored, like, I really don't care. Like, silent films are really hard to find. So if I miss one, blame the filmmakers who churned out these films ad nauseum, and then use the celluloid to make other films and overwrite others and erase all of this creation. This was a practice that went well on into the 1960s, and this is why so many Doctor Who episodes are missing. So, yeah, silent film's not my favourite medium. So, uh, yeah, let's move on. I've counted five operas about Lady Jane Grey, and only one is going to feature in my rankings. I have to be particular when it comes to stage productions, be it a play, a musical or an opera. By definition, they weren't meant to be watched on a screen, but they're still a visual medium and deserve acknowledgement. Was that on my audio? I'm just a shouting from next door. It's useful if there's a film adaptation or a pro shot. So when it comes to plays, I usually go for the film adaptation rather than the play itself, unless the play's got a pro shot. If either aren't available, then I have to look for it in its Audible form. No, this is not sponsored by Audible. But if you find like the radio play or the score for your opera or your musical, then that will count. And I do encourage people to go to the theatre whenever they can. Just don't be an asshole to the other audience members or the front of house staff. Yes, I'm going to do a rant video about that later on, but right now I just want to get this one done so we have a form of progress. And I like opera, especially when a phantom is involved. <laughs> this saga of Lady Jane Grey operas begins at La Scala in Milan in February of 1836. The Italian composer Nicola Vacai composed a score specifically to cater to the abilities of the Spanish singer Maria Malibran. The libretto was provided by Carlo Pepoli, and the opera was called Giovanna Grey. For Vakai, this opera was to be his grand return as he had been on hiatus for eight years and he was looking for a comeback. Operas tend to be tragedies, so Lady Jane Grey seemed like the perfect subject. I mean, Gaetano Donizetti himself composed operas set in the Tudor era like Anna Bolena and Mary Stuart, and there's one about Robert Dudley and then there's another one about Robert Devereux. He had considered adapting Lady Jane Grey because four years after Maria Stuart premiered, it was censored in Italy, so he tried to think of a replacement, but nothing came to light. I have a feeling he might have succeeded where others failed, but again, we'll get to it. Alan, do you want to go outside? Unfortunately, the premiere of Vakai's Giovanna Grey was a failure. Malibran's performance was applauded, but that was the extent of their praise. Critics noted that the show was overly long and the characters did not garner the appropriate level of sympathy for the audience to care when they died. It became clear that the audience and the critics were applauding Maria Malibran because of her effort in her performance instead of the show itself. The majority of the show, it was said, was wholly dependent on her performance and she carried the entire thing. I'm sure you can imagine a film or TV series that has that exact same problem. It's not very good on its own, but there is just one performance in there that just carries the whole thing. Like Raul Julia in Street Fighter, or Patrick Stewart in David Lynch's Dune. A series of unfortunate events condemned Giovanna Grey to obscurity. Maria Malibran was supposed to sing excerpts from the score when she went to London later that year, but this never came to pass, and any redemption she might have brought it was crushed when she fell off her horse in July that same year and passed away in September. La Scala did not add Giovanna Grey to their repertoire, which would have preserved it. 
Vakai himself rarely composed afterwards, and his last three operas were also forgotten. He was, however, a sought-after music teacher by Italian high society, and he worked at the Milan Conservatory. Following the failure of Giovanna Gray, four more composers attempted to give Jane a definitive operatic persona. The next one to try was Antonio di Antoni, which was to be performed in Trieste in 1848, but never saw the light of day. I think someone dropped something on their toe. I hope so, otherwise someone's being murdered next door. I'm just trying to talk about some operas. Just a few years later, Timoteo Pisini composed a score with Giovanni Penacchi, if I pronounce that wrong, I'm really sorry, who provided the libretto. This was also called Giovanna Gray and premiered successfully in Ferrara in 1853, starring Italian mezzo-soprano Luigia Abadia as Jane. However, despite its success, the score and libretto have been lost to the sounds of time. Another opera called Giovanna Gray, seriously guys, maybe you get somewhere if you thought of a more creative title, premiered in Trieste in 1859, composed by Giuseppe Menghetti, who decided to work Carlo Papoli's libretto into the score. It was shown for the carnival season, but that's all we know of this one. And finally, a French composer, Henri Paul Busser premiered his version in 1891, simply titled Jane Grey. Again, this did not enter the repertoire and was forgotten. Thus far, Arnold Rosner's The Chronicle of Nine is the only surviving opera featuring Lady Jane Grey. The recorded score is on YouTube, Spotify and Amazon Music. And thankfully, this was written in English, so I don't have to worry about dismissing it due to not understanding it, and it will feature in my ranking somehow. I've been checking and double checking for pieces of media for the merest hope that there is some way it can be covered in a rankings list. Only after extensive searching will I decide to leave it off the list. It almost seems as though there's a curse on these operas. Maybe it has something to do with naming your piece after the main character, always associating it with its original failure. Maybe the composers just weren't that good. It's so eerie to think that once there was music in this world, and it will never be heard again. Now, unfortunately, there is no way of recovering these operas besides inventing a time machine, but there is still one thread back to Vakai's original opera all the way back in 1836. I tracked down the libretto. If you're wondering what a libretto is, it features the text for the theatrical production. Some might just call it the lyric book or the script, but libretto is the classical term. This was only a couple quid on Amazon, so I seized the opportunity and bought it, because why not? The text was scanned from the original back in 1836 and features the cast list for the original premiere. Unfortunately, there's no sheet music. Boy, if I found the music, I'd find some way to get this music out to the world and see if those critics were right. The whole thing is in Italian, and I have a vague idea of what these words mean. I could attempt to translate it, if anyone is interested in seeing that. It might mean actually having to learn Italian, because I don't think Google Translate is going to be much help. Maybe I'll do that by popular demand. If, say, this video gets 10,000 views, I'll translate the libretto. So, show this video to everyone you know, share it on social media, boost it up in the algorithm, so you can hold me to my word. I'm game. I just need the encouragement. If you want to track down the libretto for yourself, I've also found out that you can find a free copy on the Internet Archive. Again, still in Italian, but just make sure that when you're searching for it, you spell grey with an A, not grey with an E, because that's how the title is, so, as you say, like Giovanna Grey, even though it was grey. British grey, not American grey. Anyway, so that was the lost media of Lady Jane Grey, a little bonus video to add onto the rankings list. I thought Jane was going to get the three video treatment, she got the four video treatment, lucky her. So... Yeah, I was really struggling how to write the rankings list script because if I want to talk about the lost media and Mark Twain at the same time, we gotta split some things up because it's just too long and I don't wanna spend for a I don't wanna spend ages working on one video. I don't like doing that. But yeah, if you don't want to miss the rankings list, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. 
and a big thank you to my patrons who support the channel so they're listed up there no matter, doesn't matter how much you pledge you can always get your name in the credits when I make a video and charge patrons for it hopefully there's some titanic videos coming out soon although the patrons don't get charged for my titanic videos at the moment not the titanic rankings videos anyway thank you to my king and queen patrons Alison Cuff Jill My Nero, Larissa and Leslie Williams and hopefully I'll see you soon for the next video. Well what did you expect in an opera? A happy ending? <laughs> <laughs>